I grew up in a really small town, in a country town, and growing up in a small town in a rural community, you spend all of your days outside. And so your entire life is about being physically active. Being outside almost all the time turned me into a physical person. And so the profession of physical therapy is just a very natural fit for me. I became a canine physical therapist because of a eureka moment. And it started a question in my mind of, well, if I learned evidence-based medicine as a human PT, why are we not practicing that same evidence-based medicine on dogs when it comes to physical therapy? So when I came to CSU, we created intentionally the human model of rehab in the veterinary teaching hospital. What that means is the dogs have therapy from critical care all the way through return to sport. All of the dogs who come to see me in rehab have diagnostics already. I know if they have disc disease or osteoarthritis. I know if they have a cruciate or if they have an elbow injury. And when I know that, I can create a better treatment plan for the dog. And I can create a better evidence-based treatment plan for the dog. I think it's important for dogs to be comfortable because they're such an integral part of our lives as humans. They are an extension of who we are. And when they hurt, we hurt. If they can't go for a walk, we don't go for a walk. We're all connected very deep down. When I finished my college undergraduate education, I came to a, a choice point, and it just so happened that right around that very same time, the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where I was originally grew up and was from, was starting a women's varsity soccer program. And they asked me to come be their coach. And for me, coaching and teaching are very Head similar. Down, your body's forward and drop. So you have to, in fact, coach soccer players to be able to think on their own and make decisions on their own. And that, for me, is the basis of my teachings. These kids are usually bright enough that you're more there as a facilitator. You're really just facilitating their wonderful efforts, and it's just tremendously satisfying to work with these kind of kids. It has wonderful inherent value, but research also tends to attract the students and the residents and the interns who are very curious about figuring things out. They want to figure out what's going on inside the animal and what can they do to help and how can they advance the profession. Colorado State University, the Veterinary Teaching Hospital, is, it turns out to be a great place for a teacher. We're very fortunate to have an administration that I think understands the importance of the teaching part of that title. And so in many, many ways, they show that they value individuals who are here not only just to do research, not only to be good clinicians, but also to be passionate teachers. And this is a great place for us to be working because of the support and the culture that we have here. I started working with horses about the age of 10. I would volunteer at a barn, taking care of the horses and helping out the veterinarian that would visit the barn on a daily basis. So that was a great exposure to equine veterinary medicine at a very young age. I saw the importance of the human-animal bond, the freedom and joy that a horse can offer a person but also how important we are for, for horses' well-being. And that is the place that I felt like I could help fill in gaps that weren't being met. It's often said that the eye is the window to the soul. I learned during my medicine residency that the eye is the indicator as to what's going on within the body, and that's very true with horses. We would see these horses come in with vision issues that could have been met or could have been solved with people that had the right skills and ability, um, but unfortunately, the treatment wasn't there at the time. 
squamous cell carcinoma is the most common form of ocular neoplasia we see in the horse. Unfortunately, many horses lose their eyes to this type of cancer every day. One of my goals and desires and dreams of, of being here and being able to do research here at CSU was to find a better option versus a nucleation or eye removal for horses with squamous cell carcinoma. The goal of my research is to save horses' eyes. As an ophthalmologist, I oversee the whole practice in the ophthalmology service, so oversee students and residents that are, are on the service at the time. We get to examine, treat, diagnose a variety of species, which makes the service quite unique in terms of the variety of things that we do. I wanted to be at CSU to use my skills, showcase my passion, and really move veterinary medicine forward. And it's here at CSU that we're allowed to do that through collaboration, inspiration from other people, and just support from the hospital.